thing, Louise. I want to do this all myself. It's pretty fancy lunch, eh? Well, it's for a pretty fancy guy. <laughs> well, I hope you get it, honey. Hmm? Get it? Get what? That dress, mink stole, whatever you whipping up that storm for. <laughs> Louise. Well, why don't you try buttering him up? Tell him he's handsome. But remember, you got to say it with a straight face. <laughs> I'm not after anything. It's just that, well, when Danny made his appeal last night at the St. Jude Hospital benefit, oh, you should have heard him, Louise, pouring his heart out for those poor, sick children. I felt so full of pride I could have burst. And suddenly I realized how lucky I was that a man like that actually belongs to me. Men like Danny are hard to find. I don't know why you can hear him bellowing a mile away. <laughs> I'll admit he isn't the quiet type. But he's a devoted father, a loving husband, and, oh, I want to deserve him. I want to be the best wife in the whole world. A real helpmate. Somebody he can lean on. I want to be the kind of a wife that makes a man say, Darling, I don't know how I'd get along without you. Hey, what's for lunch? <laughs> Darling. All I said was, what's for lunch? <laughs> when a man's got it, it don't matter what he said. <laughs> I love you. Oh, I love you too, sweetheart. Mm. Love you very much. Honey. Yes. While we're on a subject. Yeah. There's something I've got to know. Yes, darling. What's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you, you husband. Well, what are you getting so excited about? Wow. Hey, it looks pretty fancy. What is it? Pheasant with wild rice. <laughs> Pheasant for lunch? That's right. What's the occasion? No occasion. You mean it's just a regular little old day, everyday lunch? Right. So how come yesterday I had a bologna sandwich? <laughs> well, without even tame rice. Oh, come on, sit down. Okay, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. What color is it? My color's what? The darling new dress that you saw that's been reduced to a mere arm and a leg. Oh, my gosh. You and Louise have exactly the same kind of mind, cynics, both of you. Can't a wife go to a little trouble to please her husband without being suspected of having an ulterior motive? Honey, it's been my experience that when a woman suddenly starts worrying about her husband's interior, it's because she's thinking about her exterior, which is very ulterior. <laughs> well, I'm not that kind of a wife. I was very proud of you last night, and I happen to be very much in love with you, and I just want to please you, and... and... Oh, poo! Poo? Poo on trying to show a husband how much you care and how much you want to be a good wife. Oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry, honey. You don't have to prove anything to me. I'm sold. You're a great wife. Do you think I'm a real helpmate? Why, of course. <laughs> the kind of a woman a man can lean on. Oh, you're the prettiest leaning post in New York, kid. <laughs> I get it. Hello? Hey, Phil. Uh, call me back about a half hour, will you? I'm just about to have the most wonderful lunch made by the most wonderful wife. Oh, no, kid, you can't have lunch with me. There's just enough pheasant for one peasant. That's me. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? I didn't know... No, no, I didn't know McDougal was in town. How could I have a luncheon date with him? You're out of your mind. You're waiting for me at Lou Charles. You're kidding. I made no appointment to meet you at Lou Charles. I'll bet you a million dollars I made no such appointment. Oh, wait a minute. Kathy. Kathy. <laughs> I owe you a million dollars. <laughs> I'll be right down. Sweetheart, love her. Well, honey, oh, baby. anybody can forget a telephone message. Sweetheart, I I'm not a businessman. I'm just a lowly entertainer. I have no office, no secretary. My home is my office. When I get a message at home, honey, it's just as important as any message received at any office by any secretary. You know what would happen to a secretary if she forgot to give her boss an important message? Oh, come on, will you, baby? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. Don't get upset about it. It's oh, all right. I you down. I'm not dependable. You should fire me. I can't fire you. We're married. I don't know. <laughs> Please, it could ha happen to anyone. It's all right. <laughs> now, come on. I'm not anyone. I'm your wife. And this is your home, and your home is like your office, and you, so your messages are extra important. For all I know, 
I lost a big engagement for Sweetheart, you. Sweetheart, it's not that important. No damage done. They'll wait for me, baby. They'll wait. Go on, hurry. Don't waste any more time with me. You okay? Go on. <laughs> yeah, I wish I were dead. <laughs> I gotta go, honey. I gotta go. Feel like this. You followed me up for an important appointment, and I feel like a heel. I don't understand. <laughs> I wanted to be such a perfect wife, and I failed. You failed haven't, utterly. You haven't failed. <laughs> Not even utterly. I don't deserve you. Honey, yes, 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 you do. You deserve me and better. <laughs> Sweet and so kind. Everything that woman could possibly want in us. That's true, but you deserve me. <laughs> Wonderful doll. Everything is fine. <laughs> You're just saying that because you're such a perfect husband. Oh, honey, please, I've got to go. Well, they're waiting for me. Darling. But I'll prove to you that you can depend on me from now on. I'm going to write down every single message in my message uh, book so I can't forget. I'll be so efficient th that you won't be able to get along okay. without me. I promise, darling. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. <laughs> now go. I don't want to. <laughs> sure and check everything against the list. And uh, be sure that Rusty and Linda change their clothes if they go out to play. Don't I always? And see that each has a glass of chocolate milk. Always do that, too. <laughs> oh, but most important, if there are any messages for Mr. Williams, be sure to write them down. I have never missed a message in all the years I've been here. You see, his home is like his office. And any telephone message that's received is <laughs> just as important as if it was received in an office by a secretary. What's the matter? Oh, Louise, you're a better wife to him than I am. Huh? <laughs> he, he almost missed an important business lunch, and because of me, I forgot to give him the message. Oh, man. The blast that must have come out of him is what is known in atomic circles as the dirty bomb. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, he was very sweet, but Louise, it was such a blow to me. Yeah. You know how much I want to be the best wife in the whole world. Yes, you sure do. And then I fail him by making an important mistake like that. Ah, anybody can make one little mistake. Well, I've made mine. There aren't going to be any more. From now on, my sole mission in life is to prove to Danny that he can depend on me. Well, now, don't overdo it. Miss Williams, I had a fellow once who depended on me so much that he gave up his job so he can concentrate on his dependence. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye, Miss Williams. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Williams? Oh, yes. Yeah. This is Mrs. Fox. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Fox? I don't suppose you remember me. We met just briefly last night at the St. Jude's Hospital Benefit. But Mr. Fox and I were both so impressed by your husband's performance and his sincere appeal that, well, we've decided we'd like to donate $10,000. Oh, well, that's just wonderful, Mrs. Fox. I know Danny will be just thrilled. And if you're both free tomorrow night and would pay us the honor of having dinner with us, we'd like to hand your husband the check personally. Oh, well, we're and I know Danny would be delighted to come. Oh, that's fine. Is 7.30 all right? 7.30 is fine. Oh, uh, that's 942 Park Avenue. 942 Park Avenue. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Oh, we'll be there. Don't worry. I'm going to write this down the minute I hang up in my message book. All right. We'll see you tomorrow then. Uh, 7.30 tomorrow night. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye, Mrs. Fox. Hello? Oh, hello, Alice. You're waiting for me? But I thought our date was 2 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot we moved it up. I'll be there right away. I'll meet you in front of Saks. What? At Shraff's? Oh, gee, I'm sorry. Well, I I'll get there as fast as I can. Oh, don't worry. It won't happen again. From today on, I'm writing everything down in my message book. Bye. <laughs> Oh, somebody take this lasagna away before I eat it all, huh? <laughs> I cannot take another bite. Oh, sensational. 
You know, you're a pretty good Italian for an Irishman. <laughs> Louise made the lasagna. Louise made it? Mm -hmm. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. I just didn't think your forte was foreign dishes. Oh, yeah. You ought to taste my matzo ball soup some. <laughs> You do? Oh, Linda, how do you know you like them? You've never had them. Well, if I never had them, how'd you know I don't like them? <laughs> She's got something there. I suppose you like pizza, too. Uh-huh. All right, Smarty, then tell me what's your favorite kind of pizza. Mozzarellas, tomatoes, anchovies, pepperoni. What's your favorite pizza? Peanut butter. <laughs> What's the difference? Yeah, I don't like any kind of. Pizza. What's the difference? I don't like what she wants. I like it. Let's not talk about food anymore, will you? I am really full. Honey, do you mind if I finish my coffee in the next room? It's nearly 7:30, and I don't want to catch the news roundup. I'll bring it into you right away, darling. Oh, thank you, dear. 7:30. Hmm. hmm? Well, suddenly it seems to me that there was something about 7:30. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go, go, you have it in the other room. But we'll miss the argument. Get out of here. Watch television. I'll bring it What's wrong? What is it? What? Oh, what? I did it again. What did you do it again? What? <laughs> a woman called me that was at St. Jude's Hospital Benefit Fund and said that she and her husband wanted to donate $10,000. Well, that's wonderful. What are you crying about? Well, she wanted to give the check to you personally, huh? and they invited us to dinner at 7.30. Well, that's great, sweetheart. So we'll go. What night? Tonight! <laughs> what tonight? It's tonight. Tonight's tonight? What <laughs> can't that be? $10,000, honey. You promised you'd write the messages down. Well, I started doing the pencil was broken, and Alice called, and the girls were waiting for me, and oh, I'm just a failure oh, as a wife. Oh, let's I'm not good. start that again. Huh? You're not a failure as a wife. Look, let's go anyway, so we'll be a little late and a little full, but we'll go. Come on. Oh, Dad, you're so good, so forgiving, so kind. Please, I honey. don't deserve you. Will you please cut that out? Now, come on, let's get dressed and go. Now, who are the people? The people. <laughs> the people? Kathy. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, you, you didn't forget me. Kathy, how could you do that? $10,000. Try to remember the name. What's the name? Come over here. Come over here. Now, lie down. Lie down. Put your feet up here. Put your head back. Now, clear your mind. Clear your mind. Don't think of a thing. You understand? Is your mind clear? All right. All right. It's yesterday. You're home, the phone rings, bring. You answer, and a woman says, hello, I'm Mrs. I'm Mrs. 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 It was an animal. An animal call? <laughs> it, it was a name like an animal. A name, a name like an animal. Elephant, hippopotamus, no. tiger, lion, no. Sam lion, Sam a hairy lion. No. It wasn't a lion. It was a smaller animal. Smaller animal. Yeah. Aardvark? Artie Aardvark? Oh. Gopher. Seymour Gopher. Oh, no. Man, I don't know any gophers. <laughs> Dog. Cats. Cats. No. Sheldon cats. Tom no cats. Dogs, no dogs. No cats. No dogs. No, no cats. No. Squirrels. Chipmunks. Platypus. Platypus? Joe Platypus? <laughs> Bee Platypus? What kind of name is Platypus? You're driving me crazy. <laughs> wolf. How about wolf? Hey, wolf. Ed Wolf. Big textile manufacturer. Lives on Park Avenue. Oh, Ed and Millie Wolf. She did say Park Avenue. That's got to be it. After all, how many small animals live on Park Avenue? All right, Ed, dinner's ready. Oh, thank goodness. I'm starved. Well, if you insist on fancy new dishes on Cook's Night Out, then you just have to wait till they're ready. Your but I wonder who that can be. I don't know, but whoever it is, get rid of them so we can eat. <laughs> Wolf. How are you, Eddie? Well, Good fine. to see you. Come on in, honey, and sit down. It's my wife, Kathy. You met her at the benefit the other night. Why, sure. How, uh, how do you do, Mrs. Williams? Oh, just call me Kathy. Say, it was certainly nice of you to invite us, Ed. Well, <laughs> it's good to see you any time. Always a pleasure. Uh, but, uh, 
Look, uh, we were just about to eat, Danny, and... I uh, told you, Kathy, I told you, if we didn't hurry, they'd start without us. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, uh, look, they just dropped in, the uh, Williamses. Oh, uh, well, that's, uh, very nice, dear. <laughs> How are you, Mildred, my dear? I haven't seen you in a long while. You're looking well, and I got a chance to talk to you last night. This is my wife, Kathy. Uh, how do you do? Uh, Mildred yeah. Wolf. Yes, I was just telling the folks that we were just about to sit down to dinner. <laughs> Not a minute too soon. We're just famished. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, maybe Ed didn't explain to you This is Cook's Night Out Oh, is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> Besides eat, that is <laughs> She's very good at that <laughs> Well Yes, there's nothing to do but, uh Go in to dinner. <laughs> all right, fine, I'm starved. I do hope you like lasagna. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> I may never eat again. <laughs> I've eaten enough lasagna today to feed the whole Italian army. <laughs> Or sink the whole Italian Navy. <laughs> sure, I can't get you another cup of coffee. Oh, no, thank no, you. Oh, then I'll just go out and stack the dishes for the maid. Oh, may I help you? Oh, dear, it'll only take a minute. Well, Ed, that uh, certainly was a wonderful dinner. Well, I'm glad you liked lasagna. Oh, yeah, love it. Sometimes we eat it twice a night. <laughs> good, good. I had, I, uh... I didn't want to mention it at the dinner table, but I guess it's okay to talk business now. Business? Yeah, about the check for the hospital. Check? Oh, yes, of course. Well, naturally, I was very impressed with your appeal, and I fully intend to donate something. <laughs> something, you hear that, Kathy? <laughs> You're a modest man, Ed. <laughs> I am? <laughs> you are, and I'm proud of you. You know, your generosity should be an example to everybody in this town. And I don't get me wrong, I know you can well afford it, but that's not the point. You'd be surprised, Ed, to learn that the people with the most money are sometimes the last to shell out. As late as we were, Danny couldn't resist calling the fund chairman and telling him about Edward Wolfe's magnificent oh, contribution. They were thrilled down at headquarters. I bet they got it all over town already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, it'll be in the morning paper. I know that, picture and all. <laughs> paper? Uh, you, you mean the newspaper? Of course, by morning, you'll be a celebrity. <laughs> Couldn't back out now if you wanted to. Of course, I know you wouldn't want to, but... Oh, no, no, of course not. I... Well, I'll just finish my coffee, and then I'll go in and write out a check. Yeah, I can hear the whole town raving tomorrow. What about that Ed Wolf donating $10,000? <laughs> went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> Ed, a generous man like you doesn't have a wrong pipe in his body. What a fine fellow. My gosh, $10,000. Of course, if you want to make it more, you can, but then we don't oh. want to make a liar out of the morning paper, now, do we? Uh, no, no, well, uh... Yeah, all right, I'll, uh... I'll go in and write out a check. Fine. <laughs> Yes, dear? Was it my imagination, or did Ed Wolf seem a little surprised when you mentioned the $10,000? Makes you think that. Well, the way he choked on his coffee, it seemed to oh, me that... Oh, come on. He said it went down the wrong pipe. Did that ever happen to you? It happened to me lots of times. Honey, the mention of $10,000 couldn't make Ed Wolf blink, much less choke. He's one of the biggest textile men in the world. You realize how much money he's got? And deserves every nickel of it, too. He's a great guy. Earned it all himself. He's a shrewd old fellow, I want to tell you. For a wolf, he's smart like a fox. <laughs> What's the matter? It was a perfectly honest mistake. What mistake? Mi mistake? Oh, you mean we're at the wrong small animal? <laughs> Not a 
Raoul? No. The Fox. The Fox? Fox, of course, of course. George and Bernice Fox. They live on Park Avenue, too. Oh, but the wolves, they must think we're nuts. And you know something? I think you are. <laughs> Come on, get your things and let's get out of here. Well, here's the check for $10,000. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Bernice, are you sure you told her it was for tonight? Oh, I'm positive. She repeated it back to me. Said she'd write it down in her message book. I can't understand it. The maid said they left almost two hours ago. Well, I hope nothing's happened to... Danny, Mrs. Williams. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad you... you... Sorry we're late. We thought something terrible had happened to you. Uh, it did. It did. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, uh, I, the last minute I have to stop over to Ed Wolf's place down the street and pick up his check. Oh, yeah, so we heard about that check. You did? I called fundraising headquarters to see if you were there and they told me about it. Oh. I was sure surprised. Not as surprised as Ed was. <laughs> $10,000, eh? Yeah, that's just as much as you're giving. That's what you think. Huh? I'm not going to be outdone by Ed Wolf. I made my check out for $15,000. Wow. Prices go up every two hours. <laughs> we ought to go out and come back for the late show. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Well, what are we waiting for? I'll bet you two starved people are just dying to get into the dining room. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, uh, George, if, I mean, you and Bernice aren't too hungry oh, while you can no, wait. I've it's had all right. the cook make something extra special. I know you're going to love it. It's an Italian dish. <laughs> Lasagna? You like it, don't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Every hour on the hour. <laughs> take this silent treatment any longer. All the way home in the cab, you wouldn't say a word. Yell at me, bawl me out, but for heaven's sake, say something. I can't say anything. <laughs> Why not? I'm full of lasagna. <laughs> I eat $25,000 worth of lasagna. <laughs> well, if you won't say it, I'll say it. I'm a failure as a wife. I'm no help. I'm a hindrance. Some hindrance. We got $15,000 more from the hospital than we expected. So you keep on being that kind of a hindrance. Don't worry. Well, that was a sheer accident. It doesn't alter the fact that I've failed you, that I I've made you unhappy, and you may as well admit that I'm not dependable. That's enough. I don't want to hear another word out of you, young lady. I'm getting sick and tired of this. Stop tearing yourself down. You're not a failure as a wife. And dependable, if nothing else, you're dependable. All the things I depend on from you are there when I want them. Goodness, kindness, compassion, patience, unselfishness, they're all there. It wasn't for the fact that you're a little forgetful. You'd be perfect. <laughs> perfect. You wouldn't be married to me, you'd be in a museum. <laughs> no guy wants a perfect woman for a wife. Believe me, sheer perfection is dull. And tonight's Operation Pandemonium was anything but dull. <laughs> Now, stop tearing yourself down. If you don't like you, that's too bad. You're not married to you, I am. And I like it just the way it is. I don't want anything changed, nothing. <laughs> now, what's the matter? You do love me. Uh, of course I love you. And I love you. If you really love me, you'd prove it. I'll do anything, anything. Anything? Anything. Please get me a bicarbonate. <laughs> <laughs> don't squeeze, don't. <laughs> 